Hey guys and welcome. My name is Kevin Smith. And I'm Robert Rose. And we're here today with the SIU's Automotive Tech Tips today to talk to you a little bit more about uh, what a misfire is going to sound like and going a little bit deeper into the science of it. So today's topic, like you said, um, misfires. So how to test a misfire. Mechanically, we'll be going over compression testing and leak down testing. There's a few things to note when you are um, trying to diagnose a misfire. You can have either a fuel fault, ignition fault, or a mechanical issue. If you're if you're having a mechanical issue, you're while you're cranking the engine over, you're gonna it's not gonna be as it's not gonna be all the same sound. They're gonna have a different pitch towards that sound. Okay, so um, as you can hear, as you can tell, that um, our engine here is not sounding like it should. It's not all the same as you're cranking over. So a few things to note when you are doing a compression test is um, you're, as you are cranking your engine over, you're going to see your needle is going to bump. If your first bump is low, but then your other bumps are building um, compression as you're going, you know that you can tell that you're you're not, your cylinders aren't sealing as they should. But if your first bump is as the same as the bumps after, you know your cylinder's good. So just to test, um, just a quick check, if your bumps are, if your first bump is, um, is low and your, your bumps after that are good, you can squirt some oil in the cylinder so you can check your cylinder walls. And if your compression bumps are all even after you squirt the oil in the cylinder you can tell that it's your lower end your piston rings but if your compression does the same and it's a small bump and then the bumps after that are the are equal you can tell it's going to be your top end either intake valve or exhaust valve or your head gasket um, this is a gm engine so as you're trying to do a cranking compression test you can put it into clear flood mode which clear flood modes um, what it does is disable fuel the injectors spring into the cylinder, so you won't have you won't so, um, soak your uh, cylinder walls or washer walls. So how to do that? You step, you turn your ignition on, step on the gas pedal uh, to the floor, and then crank over. If you don't have a, um, if you're not working on a GM engine or that uh, that clear flood mode isn't in the vehicle you're working on, you can either pull your ignition fuse and pull your um, you can pull your ignition fuse and you can pull your uh, fuel injector fuse. So now we'll get into showing what these compression gauges look like. So as you can see, our gauge here on the left has built pressure probably up until 215 PSI, but our gauge on the right our bad cylinder has not built any pressure at all. So what the compression tester is testing is testing the ability to get air in to the cylinder and compress that, um, compress the air coming into the cylinder and it's uh, your, seal, your ability to seal within the cylinder. So you're checking your piston rings, your intake valve and your exhaust valve. But what a compression tester what a compression, a cranking compression test is limited to is the ability for the engine to breathe. So it can, when you're doing a cranking compression test, you're, te you're testing the ability for the engine to bring air into the cylinder, but you're not testing it for the ability to get, get um, that air out of the cylinder. So you're kind of limited when you are doing a um, cranking compression test. And I'll pass it over to Rob to explain the four-stroke cycle. Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the basic building blocks of the four-stroke four compression cycle within an internal combustion engine. Right here we have a halfway torn down mo uh, Honda motor four-cylinder. What we're going to be doing is that we're going to actually go over some of the parts of the motor here. So first we actually have our intake valve here. This is going to be our intake port matched up with our intake valve. And then we also have our exhaust port with our exhaust valve. And then the green here you can see is our coolant passageways within our cylinder head. And then on top of that, this green area right here along with all the circular area right here inside of the jacket is 
going to be another coolant passageway inside of the, the uh, engine block. Then on top of that, if I rotate this a little bit, you can kind of see we have our piston, our connecting rod, our, uh, and then we also do have our piston rings here, which are also going to be part of the compression process. So the main things that these leak, that our cylinder leak detection tests, along with a, uh, if we have any sort of cylinder leakage or misfire that's due to poor compression, we're going to be looking mainly at the sealing of our intake valve, our exhaust valve, our head gasket, and our piston ring here. And also if there's any warpage on the cylinder head at all, or if the valve is stuck open or something like that. So now what we're going to do is there's two quick tests that we can do. One quick test is going to be that we're going to use, we're going to use an extension here just to show you really quick on a quick and easy way is that we're going to be, since we have the valve cover off, we're going to be looking at the intake and exhaust valves here and we're going to crank the engine, make sure not to go in the wrong direction here. We actually already had it on the right stroke. So right here, none of the, both of these valves did not open or close. So we know that right now it's on a compression stroke. And what we're gonna do now, so we're gonna take our cylinder leak detector test hose, and we're gonna screw it into our spark plug hole where we removed all four of our spark plugs. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna calibrate our cylinder leak detector tool that we have here. And from there, what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna connect our shop air in. You can see right now the device isn't properly calibrated, so what we need to do is just turn the dial a little bit just to make sure that it lines up. It might go past it a little bit. You just need to be able to work it a little bit just to make sure that it lines up. So that's probably about the best that we're going to get for now. So now what we're going to do, so to do with the more of the quick, the quick way and the way that a lot of people probably know at shops is really, we're going to test it now. And as you can hear, this is a good cylinder. So it's going to be holding compression for the most part, and there's not going to be as much of a leak or any leak at all, potentially. So while we're looking at the gauge here, we have our percentages here showing this will be 100% leak, which just shows that there would be no spark, no compression, no internal combustion happening. And this will be a 0% leak, which is all, virtually almost impossible, but can happen in some, some cases. So right now, it shows we have a 10% leak, which is quite normal which means that you know, there's a little bit of air escaping out of the cylinder ring or the piston rings or something along the lines of maybe that there's just some sort of clearance issue that we have. But either way, 10% is still a good number to stay within that margin. So now what we're going to do is we're also going to show you a test on a poor cylinder or a cylinder that has no compression. So we're going to do the same exact thing on cylinder number three. And what we're going to do, we're going to watch our valves. Right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hook up our cylinder leak detector test tool again. You can definitely hear that we have a very high leak. So when we had 10% on the first cylinder, we're actually going to about 90% now on this cylinder. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump over to Kevin. And we're gonna talk a little bit more on... One thing to mention, the engine got rotated backwards. No, no. So we'll probably just go over that test one more time. Um, when you do rotate the engine backwards, there's a chance that you may skip timing on the timing belt, which is something you don't wanna do. So let's just go ahead and do that test one more time. Sorry about that, good catch. Yeah, I'm watching. So now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna watch again. Obviously, each application is going to vary per engine. This engine's a little bit easier to use this method on, but there are also other other vehicles and engines that won't really allow you to use this method. So the first one that we did on the good cylinder is obviously one that you can do, and Kevin will talk to you a little bit more about that in a few minutes.
So that's definitely a whole lot better of a result than we originally anticipated. So there's your example. Thank you again, Kevin, for uh, kind of showing us how it was done. Kevin? OK, so like Rob was saying, that extension trick method on the top of the piston isn't always something that you can do. Sometimes you have a uh, engine like this to where your spark plugs come in at an angle and you can't really get a, um, an extension in there to kind of show you straight up and down. So what you can do if you have a engine like this where your spark plugs kind of come in at an angle, you can use your leak down tester to, um, and I'll kind of show you how, how to do that. So I'll have my, uh, my partner Rob come over here and hold, hold our leak down tester and I can show you how to get your cylinder on um, top dead center with a compression test, with a leak down tester with an engine with your spark plugs in here at an angle. <clears throat> so what you want to do, you want to crank over your engine in the direction that it's supposed to go. Um, you don't want to back up. So if you watch your your needle on your leak down tester. As you're rotating the engine, you're going to build a slight bits of compression, so your needle is going to bump up a little bit. So as I'm cranking, there's needle bumps, needle bumps, bumps. And then it doesn't bump. So that way, once you get your cylinder to top dead center, your bow, both valves are closed, and your needle is going to stop moving. So then you then you can tell that your cylinder is at top dead center. Then you can go ahead and leak, hook up your leak down tester. You can leak up. You can hook up your air to your leak down tester. So let's see if I got this right. So I didn't do it right. I'm on the exhaust um, of top dead center. So, so I'll go again. What's good? Okay, so I was good. Sorry. There we go. So yeah. So you can see here, we are good. I was right. I'm sorry for that. Um, and we have about 10% leakage, which is um, within specification for this engine. So now I'll kind of get into the insides of a cylinder leakage test. So in this diagram, pretty much shows you what's inside of a cylinder leakage test and the functions, and I'll describe the functions of it. So what's, what's, what is here is your shop air in, so normally shop air is around 120, 120 PSI to 150 PSI. So you have that PSI of air coming in to your regulator adjustment. Uh, what you do with your regulator adjustment, since your gauge is really, our gauge in, in this case is a 65 PSI gauge, you have to go through a 40 thousandths orifice to drop down the pressure for this gauge to read accurately. So you would hook up your shop air, you have to adjust, move your adjustment regulator, crank it down to where it can go through this orifice and your, P your gauge will read um, 65 PSI, which it's kind of a pressure and a leakage percent um, relationship. So what you have, Really at zero, you have 65 PSI, but your leakage tester is gonna measure in percent of leakage. So from zero to 10% all the way to 100% leakage. So after, so you have a, this orifice is a 40 thousandths orifice. So if you have a leakage that is 40 thousandths or over, you'll, you're gonna have 100 PSI, you're gonna have a 100% leakage within your cylinder. But if say you have a 20 um, thousandths leak in your cylinder, I'm not too sure where that number is going to lie on this gauge, but it'll be somewhere um, on it. So after your gauge, you come out, the air goes out through the gauge, and then you have to hook it up to a 
uh, compression gauge uh, hose. So then that air is going to fill up this void at top dead center to test your intake valve, your exhaust valve, piston rings, as well as your head gasket. So that pretty sure that wraps up our first um, SIU Automotive live stream video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys kind of learned a little bit. Um, sorry for we had a few mistakes, so kind of disregard those. This is our first. Uh, this is our first run uh, of live stream tech tips, and uh, we're obviously going to have more of them down the line. But as for right now, this is our first live stream. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it, and uh, definitely, you know, make sure to follow up and check your check stream check your streaming devices to see if we're going to be broadcasting anytime soon. More notifications and emails will be sent out shortly. Thank you, guys. One more note: um, we will kind of edit this video and put it on uh, our YouTube channel. So there's also something to look out for. So um, thanks for watching. Thank you guys.